So I've been studying photorealism for a while now and it's tough and it's tedious and just a lot of work to make a render look absolutely photorealistic, especially if you're doing everything yourself from scratch. And I'm always looking for an easier, quicker way to get to it. And surprisingly, a few weeks back, the creators of Kiri Engine reached out looking to collaborate on a video and it couldn't have been at a better time because photo scanning has been something that I've always wanted to delve into, but have been avoiding it for a long time because I presumed that it required special expensive equipment and an ideal perfect setting and lighting to do it and probably requires a bit of money too if you want decent results turns out i was wrong on all three fronts because with the help of my cheap little android smartphone primarily and with just things lying around in my house and with the help of an amazing free photo scanning tool i got to put together this little short film for you guys made entirely in blender take a look Alright, let's break it down. So the basics of photo scanning, you revolve around an object, taking pictures, you cover all possible angles and cover all the nooks and crannies. And once you're done doing that, you feed those pictures into a powerful tool like Curie Engine and out pops a perfect looking 3D model that you can use to make your photorealistic renders. But you're bound to end up with blobby messes like these two if you don't prepare yourself for a few things at the least, like I did for my first photo scanning session. I chose a dark corner of a room with unidirectional lighting with a subject with not many trackable features and that is bad. So let's firstly get some fundamentals, right? Number one, the location. Now, if you're an indoorsy person and hate the outside just like I do, there's some good news because your house is more than ideal to get some good looking photo scans. All you have to do is to find the most well lit area of your house. For me, it's my living room with some white ceiling lights up above and some LED bulbs spread around in different directions and an open enough area where I can revolve around a subject. For you, it might be something else. All you have to do is try and avoid rooms with just one light because that will make only one part of the prop's texture bright and the rest of it kind of dark. Find a room that has at least two lights in opposite directions, preferably, and you are more than good to go. But if you don't have access to that too and all your rooms have unidirectional lighting, just make sure that the subject's most interesting part is facing the light, preferably the side that you intend to have in your blender shot because then at least that part will be nice and clear in the final render and you can get away with a badly scanned behind of the model. If you're an outdoorsy person though, you're in luck too. All you need is either an overcome day which is the most perfect and ideal scenario for photo scanning or you need to find a big enough area that stays in the shadows for most of the afternoon this too gives really good scans because cameras do their best work when they're given ample of lighting but i'm assuming most of you watching either hate going outside or are just too shy to revolve around an object in the public like a crazy person so I don't know if this will help or not, but all the shots that you saw in that short little film that I showed you earlier were the results of indoor photo scanning alone. So if you like that, the indoors are just going to be fine for your photo scans too. The second thing to keep in mind is the device you use for photo scanning. And of course, a DSLR will be perfect. A DSLR with a ring light like this and compatible polarizers to attach to them would be even better. But the amount of people watching this video who own a DSLR, I'm sure would be negligible. Even I don't own a DSLR, I borrowed it from a friend just so I could show you this difference. Here's a croc slipper model I generated using a DSLR. And here's the same croc model I generated using my Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro smartphone, which is a mid-range Android smartphone with a crappy worthless camera. Here's another model side by side. On the left is the DSLR model. 
and on the right is the cheap smartphone model. And actually, almost all the shots you saw in the short film were made using my smartphone. So I hope you believe me when I say that you don't need a DSLR or even an expensive smartphone like the iPhone or some phone like that if you just want to get started with photo scanning. You can probably do it all with the phone you're using to watch this video. And by the way, Kiri Engine is compatible on both Android and iOS. And the best thing is, it's free for the most part. It allows you to take 70 photos in the free version, which is more than enough for any small to mid-sized object. I mean, most of the models I generated were done using only 50 to 60 photos, even though I had the pro plan. The free version allows you to generate unlimited models within the Kiri Engine interface, and you get up to three exports every week, which is generous for $0 spent, I think. And the interface is smooth, the uploading process is user friendly, the generation process takes about 5 to 10 minutes usually, which is super fast. And it's all cloud based, so the model generation process has nothing to do with how good or bad a system you possess. So it's all good. And again, all you need is a smartphone. Just go to the pro mode of your camera, if the default app allows that. If not, download an app, there are hundreds of them available on the market, and you're good to go. All you have to do is to take good, clean, consistent photos. That is paramount, because I had access to an expensive Samsung Galaxy S23 Android smartphone and I messed up the exposure a little bit and look how the models turned out. So it doesn't matter what phone you have, if you grab inconsistent out of focus bloody photos, no photogrammetry software can save you from that. So take your time, take clean consistent photos, try to keep the whole subject in frame too, all the time if you can, that helps the tracking algorithm a lot. And also take all possible angles too, don't be lazy, up, middle up, middle, middle down, all of them. And I've tried rotating the object itself too and keeping the camera stationary, but to be honest that has given me really inconsistent results, so I prefer to revolve around the object instead, but you can try both the methods and see what works for you. And by the way, for the bottom part of the object, Kiri Engine has this really handy auto object masking feature that you can enable that allows you to flip your object right then and there while you're photo scanning and take photos of that from different angles. And the AI algorithm does its magic and binds it all together into one beautiful mesh without any of the surroundings or anything, literally other than the model itself, which is so cool. These are the photos I input into the engine and this is the model I got straight out of it in 5 minutes, which again is crazy. Same here for the croc slipper, I put these photos in and in 5 minutes I got this model out of the engine with no post processing and no housekeeping whatsoever in the middle. I didn't know photogrammetry algorithms had gotten this sophisticated while I was busy neglecting them. But anyway, once you have the environment set and your device is set, there's only one thing left to do, which is choosing the right subject. Now an ideal subject is obviously something that is not too reflective and has enough trackable detectable features. Something like a shoe or a showpiece or maybe even a vegetable or even an iron skillet or a baseball cap. Featureless objects, something like a glass sculpture or reflective statues tend not to scan so well through traditional photogrammetry. But Kiri Engine has got you covered there as well. If you get their pro plan, which by the way is 40% off right now, you get this featureless object scan mode that allows you to take nerfs, which can generate 3D models from just a video file of you rotating around an object. This feature can help you scan a featureless statue like this or a glass sculpture like this too, which was previously impossible with traditional photo scanning methods. And while we are talking about pro features, the pro plan also allows you to take 200 photos in total it allows you to upload photos from your phone locally it gives you access to the web interface too which is really handy for desktop users it gives you even shorter queuing times and most of all it gives you unlimited exports and a really handy quad remesher and pbr texture generator at the time of export which is flawless and gives really clean geometries which is missing in most photogrammetry software so grab the pro plan while it's on sale but kiri engine seems like an artist first friendly company they aren't gatekeeping basic features behind a paywall so the free plan is great for college students and just hobbyists in general but if you want to take this thing seriously definitely opt for the pro plan the pro plan also gives you access to generating gaussian splats which i'm sure you've heard of if you're active on twitter it literally feels like looking into the future of 3d and photogrammetry in general so the pro plan has all the latest and greatest features available for you but again the free plan is in no way far behind if you're just getting started out I also made two shots from the staff pick section of the app, which has a great library of 3D models that the staff picks on a weekly basis. So if you want to peek into the best of the best scans that the app has generated, that's the place to go to explore. 
And now the final step on this journey is to know some basic housekeeping steps once the model is generated, like using boolean modifiers to remove any of the background or supporting objects around the primary subject. You can actually do this within Kiri Engine itself, they have a really cool cropping tool integrated into the model viewer. They also have this texture enhancing panel which also comes pretty handy, especially this sharpness slider that helps enhance the overall texture's clarity. But yeah, obviously you can do all of this in Blender itself too. The second thing is if your model appears a little blobby and lumpy, which can happen very often often with photo scanning. The smooth and flat sculpt brushes at lower strengths can be very useful to smooth everything out a little bit. Another thing is if the textures are kind of missing in some spots, you can use the clone stamp tool in the texture paint mode to get rid of them too. And yeah, I think one last thing, if your photos itself have some issues you don't like, like for example they have too many specular highlights or their details aren't sharp enough or the photos are too dark or too bright, don't be afraid to just chuck them into a photo editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop and make all the required adjustments to them before you free them into the photogrammetry software. That can help too if you weren't vigilant enough while taking the pictures. But yeah, I think that's it. That's all I wanted to say in this video. The purpose of this video was to just encourage anybody who has been neglecting photo scanning just because they think they do not have the necessary means or resources to do it, to get into it just like I did for this video. So I hope this video was convincing enough for you to give it a try. And if you do end up making something, do not be afraid to share it with me or the social media handles of Kiri Engine. I'm sure they'd be hyped to see it as well. Check out my Patreon if you want to see the nitty gritty of how each and every scene you saw in the short film was made using Blender the lighting and the color grading and all that jazz that couldn't make it up here on the main YouTube video. So I hope to see a few of you there as well. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.